Hey everybody, how's everybody doing today? Welcome to Random Incorporated. And as you can see here, this is not Kyle. This is actually somebody different. I was actually able to trick somebody to come on board with me for at least a good 10 minutes. After 10 Hi, minutes, got Kyle. a kid. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I have a very special guest for me today. Uh, William Hampton of his Insert Local Business. William, I'm sorry. Dragonwick Creations. All right, thank you. Dragonwick Creation, which I actually have... Again, this is going to look so poorly, but it is what it is. I actually have one of his sons right here, which you guys will see more in general. And, of course, William, thanks for you for coming on board. Oh, no, man. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Oh, man. I'm glad you share our enthusiasm. But, hey, today's video, I wanted to give William a chance to speak to his, speak out to his business and let you guys enjoy his products, which, by the way, they're pretty dope. I've actually got pictures of his booth, which will be tagged to our Twitter and Instagram here shortly so William the floor is all yours buddy awesome well thanks buddy well again my name is William I run a booth called Dragon Book Creations that is uh, an all-purpose Comic Con booth I go to Comic Cons all over the country as a professional vendor I go to about 47 shows a year give or take a nickel <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, I sell everything from flags signs like you held up Flasks, dice bags, dice trays, storage boxes, prints, Call of Duty zombie park bottles, coffee cups, shot glass. You name it, I probably have it or I can make it real quick. Okay. So you pretty much made stuff by hand for the most part. For the most part. Either I make it by hand or I decorate it by hand. One of the two. Okay. Let me ask you this. What was your favorite thing to make of all time throughout your whole time doing this Ooh, oh that's a good one uh favorite thing i've made of all time doing this this one's kind of funny i know i don't do embroidery anymore i used to make embroidered patches uh years ago and i used to make the 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 one-up mario patch the little green mushroom and i used uh -huh. to make the the regular red mushroom patch and my thing, whenever I was trying to, you know, pitch the sale of it, I'm like, haven't you ever wanted to tell someone to grow up and get a life? And I hand them those two patches side by side. Sell out every time I do it. <laughs> dude. I, dude, I tell you, I used to coach college football for about three years. So some of the stuff you can tell people. I used to come up to a kid. I'd be like, hey. I said, hey, you want a hot girlfriend? Yeah, coach. Well, you got to come here to get her. And I'd walk away. I like that. I like that so much. That's so good. It worked. Oh, it worked. That kid came. He signed his letter. And he he worked. It worked. I, I worked my magic, man. I, I can talk to people. Like I so like I said, we gave out probably about I hit vendors only. Because that dude, that convention center, which I know you said you have stories. We'll talk to that later. Oh, that yeah. convention center. That convention center, oh my, dude, that was packed. See, I go to that, uh, they use that one ven uh, venue there, the, uh, the, it's that one international drive, I do believe it's just called the Savannah Trade and Convention Center, if I remember correctly. Yep, that But is they the use that one center for pretty much every show that's ever coming to Savannah, as long as it's not, not falling on the same weekend. I oh. go to uh, Savannah Comic Con there every week mm. every year and it's actually run by the same people that did savannah and amazing um and that place will hold the first year i went was as a vendor was about mm. 2021 yeah 2021 mm. and that place easily brought in 15 to twenty thousand people to walk through the door because mm. you you know where my booth was at right against that wall yep on the other side of that wall is more floor. They had that part closed off because of construction. Usually that whole oh. floor is opened up to vendors, and there's about a good 600 vendors in there. Easily. Okay, we... So we thought, when we were pulling up, so the Jeep, like I said, we left Tifton, uh, Tifton, Georgia about a little past six. Because we were like, oh, we're not getting a hotel for two nights, because the prices went up. Which I mean, you've probably seen that. Mm -hmm. Being on the road a lot. And, uh... 
we're like, dude, we're not wasting two nights. We'll just get one night. It is what it is. Dude, when we hit that construction, uh, Google Maps is like, all right, you're here. And we're like, are we? Uh, no, we're not. <laughs> oh, man. we the uh, But one of the security guys was standing there. He was like, yeah, brother, y'all are here. You just got to go uh, around this road. We're, they're doing construction. We're like, all right, but we just cut on through. You should have been there for load-in on Friday. I got there around, I want to say about 2.30, 3 o'clock on Friday. Uh, oh. And a couple of, I think, F-18s flew really low to the ground and went, like, under the bridge and set off car alarms in the parking lot because they rattled the cars. <laughs> no, 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 no. If I would have saw that in real life, I'd been hitting the deck. I actually <laughs> flew... I actually flown for the first time, so I got married uh, June of this year. Me I'm and my so wife. Sorry. <laughs> you know that's what people tell me, but uh, so I actually flown. We, me and my wife, we did an Alaskan cruise, and we had to fly for the first. I've had to flown for the first time, and she hasn't flown in like forever. Like she was five years old, and I'm over here like, all right, turbulence feels like a boat. I'm like, how oh, this feels like a boat. So when I got off the plane, I called my dad. I called my dad. I go, hey, thanks for all those years of letting me be on the boat because that turbulence was nothing. And he was just laughing. I was on a plane once to go to a show in Houston, Texas, and a big st- and a big storm popped up somewhere uh, around where I was landing, and my plane got struck by lightning and dropped eight hundred feet. No way. I am I lying, crying, ain't shit. Ain't shit. I had my mom with me. Because we were going oh. to my brother's funeral, I mean wedding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I had a Comic Con to go to the next weekend, so I just went down there for an extra week and did both things. And we tried to land in Houston, couldn't get through the cloud cover. It was so thick and the rain was so bad, it kept bouncing us off. So we went to oh. New Orleans, waited in New Orleans, tried to come back and land again, couldn't, went up to Knoxville, Tennessee. And on the way back from Knoxville to Houston, Struck by lightning and dropped about a good eight hundred feet. <laughs> oh no, I'd been. Oh yeah, I would. I would have been praying to everything known to man if that was me. Yeah. Oh man, dude, how do you? Whew. How do I do it? I don't know. I've, 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 I've got the whole. I've, I've been to Nam. I've seen some things and done some stuff. Mentality. <laughs> <laughs> oh like, man. Oh man. But yeah, no, that venue is that venue is quite amazing. Like when we have the Savannah Comic Con there, we uh, have uh, we have a professional wrestling ring set up in the back, and we'll have like wrestlers. Did y'all really? Yeah, we had Rikishi there last year. Now he didn't get in the ring and wrestle, but he like watched Aww. from the sidelines. He watched like the people wrestling, like from the local wrestling crew, like the local wrestling clubs come in and do their stuff. Yeah. Uh, that was fun. And I think a couple years ago we had Mick Foley. We had another old school famous professional wrestler that watched uh-huh. them and uh, did some commentary on their wrestling. Uh, it's a great. Aww, we also dude. have uh, show cars too, like the back wall, like where the small time artists were. There's mm-hmm. usually nothing but uh, cars, show cars. Yeah. yeah, there was a few show cars. Actually, one of my buddies, which I was by myself when I came up to your booth, but I came with two other buddies. The one, which is this is his show, Kyle from the Random Hour, and my good buddy Jay. My buddy Jay is a big car guy, and he's not he's not the biggest anime he's not the biggest anime fan. But he was like, yeah, because of me coaching, I'm always traveling. Now, luckily, I'm in the state of Georgia right now. He's like, yeah, man, I just want to hang out. He's like, I'll go try something new, which it was new for me. It was new for all three of us. Hitting conventions, trying to grow this podcast, trying to grow this channel. Like I said earlier, we knew this was our target audience. So I was like, well, we'll try. And, dude, we saw them anime cars. And a girl. I don't know. Did you go outside and check out any of the cars? Did you have a chance? Yes, I did. I, I oh, So pretty. So pretty. They were. <laughs> My favorite one was the, uh, besides the motorcycle, which was signed by Prince Zuko himself. I actually, the lady was there that owned it. She let, she was dressed up as uh, the main character from Akira. And uh, Yeah, I saw her. She hung out at my booth a little bit. Did she? Dude, she was yep. pretty cool. She was literally, her and her husband were walking around. She was holding her gun. So I looked at my buddies. I was like, yo, you think she'll let me hold her gun if I just politely ask her and give her a card? They're like, yeah. So I just walked up to her. I said, hey, uh, that'd be weird, but can I hold your rocket launcher? She's like, heck yeah, you can. 
I got a picture of me holding a rocket launcher. And then she told me that that was her bike. And speaking of Prince Zuko, so, you know, he was there. Yep. He wasn't there for very long. And uh, so the business cards cut my hand. So I was bleeding a good chunk. I didn't want to bleed on people because it was already crowded. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm running into the bathroom. I bump into a guy who has the uh, denim jacket of uh, Prince Zuko's, like, other character, the blue spirit. Yeah, I bumped into Mark because I have broad shoulders. I'm trying to fit into a tight space for me is hard. I bumped into the guy. I said, "Hey, bro, I'm sorry, bro, I'm bleeding," and my buddy's just jaw dropped. So when I got to the bathroom, I wrapped up my hand. They're like, "Devin, you realize who you bumped into?" I was like, "Yeah, man, some random guy." I said, "I was sorry." They're like, "No, bro, that was Prince Zuko, bro. You like drop your shoulder into him." I was like, "Oh, he ain't pissed. He ain't coming after me." He's like, nah, bro. He just looked at you and said, oh, bro, you cool. I was at a show in uh, Estes Park, Colorado. I was at Estes Park Comic Con 2017, I want to say. 2017, 2018. Um, Uh And they had a a good list of celebrities there. They had Elvira. They had Flash Gordon. They had uh, the the little guy from Pirates of the Caribbean. He was out there. Uh, they had face from uh, the A team and all that stuff. Oh, and nice. my booth was right next to the bathroom. Uh, like literally, you go. My booth is at the corner wall. You go around the corner and like twenty feet, there's the restroom. Okay. Uh, and Elvira, Mistress of Dark herself, went to the restroom, came back, saw my booth. And proceed to sit down and talk to me for an hour at my booth just hanging out. Dude, no. You know, I'm not the biggest fan. I have Mr. Sam fan. Jones's personal uh, phone number from Flash Gordon himself. I have Sam Jones's personal cell phone number. Dude, how'd you land that? He's a friend of mine. I, I 2020, I, I actually didn't stop going to shows in 2020. I went to huh? s- like six or eight shows throughout 2020 mm-hmm. uh and pretty much every show he was at so we just got to chit chatting and hanging out and he goes if you ever want to say hi or if you're ever out in los angeles here's my number hit me up we'll hang out and have coffee <laughs> have you done it i don't go to california man i don't i know i won't go uh, to california not a big california guy no not really no i haven't yet. i've I'm coaching some guys from out there. I just haven't had a chance to go out there. I told my wife, one of my bucket lists, I actually do want to coach out in Texas, and I want to at least go hit California at least once. And that's it. You're not missing much in California. so <laughs> that, That's what they told me. They're like, Deb, bro, you ain't missing much. But I was like, you know, it's just experience. A football season, at least at the college level, is at least six months, six to four months at minimum. So I'm like, I could live out there for four months. Yeah. It, it could be fun just for me. No, not so much. <laughs> not so much. You're just like, meh. I, was like, I, I, I can deal without walking around in human excrement. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, that's what I've heard. And actually, so like I said, uh, I've learned along the way. I won't coach in Pennsylvania anymore because there's a well-known D2 college out there. I really wanted to go. I've actually put in my resume resume out there a few times. I just recently learned horse tranquilizers is bad out there. People really? are just getting high on – yes, it's bad. Homeless people everywhere just getting high on tranquilizers, and they are just bugging out. And I'm like, yeah, no, if I was still a single man, yeah, I'd risk it. My wife, nah, she'd be freaking out if somebody, you know, stoned out of their mind. I have friends of mine that live in Knoxville that have lived in Knoxville for like 18 generations. Uh, oh. And they're starting to move out because every day at a friend of mine's house, he lives out in the and the little ding 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 ding, ding woods. Oh. Every day he has to go out and kick out someone from his shed that has stumbled in from the woods high on crack, and slept oh, in his yeah. and slept and slept in his shed. And he lives yeah. out miles into the mountains. Yeah, no. So uh, this again, the shop owner that told us about this convention, he has a quote unquote basement and it's just an open area underneath the shop where the water heater is and things like that he's had to take his gun and threaten to shoot homeless people because yeah. homeless people will sleep underneath there and it's like yeah 
I've actually had to scare off a few homeless people off campus at our at our school that I coach at. I'm like, bro, like, get out of here. Go on, get. And they'll just look at me and be like, yo, can I have five dollars? Bro, first of all, I'm a teacher. Do you think I have money? Yeah. I don't. I do not. That's the only reason why I won't go out to cons in California because there has been a few incidences like around, you know, like Los Angeles and stuff where the homeless people are attacking cosplayers that are walking down the street. Really? Yeah. I had a friend of mine go out there in 2022 to a Comic Con. I can't remember which one out in Los Angeles. And she Mm. got attacked and she didn't get hurt or nothing, but it scared the crap out of her to the point she Mm. won't go back. Hmm. I'm sorry to hear that for. I mean, I'm glad she's okay. That's like, like I said, this was our first ever convention, and dude, we were like, <sighs> we couldn't do it, man. We were like both green, and I'm more social. Like, I, being a coach, you got to be social. Like, if I could, if that venue was just big enough, and like, if I can find a way, it, let me phrase it this way, William. I'm so I can, you know, if you like, you know how you and me are carrying a conversation. <clears throat> if you give me about thirty seconds of your time. You and me are going to be best friends for life. And the 15 or 16 minutes we talked to each other, look, we're sitting there laughing, cutting up. We might know each other for a minute. In reality, I met the guy like two days ago. Like, I just met him. I thought he was cool. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm not cool. I'm not, dude, I'm lame. People look at me like, man, you're a cool dude. I'm like, ha, ha, I'm not. I literally go to work, I come home, I take care of the dogs, I play some video games, and I go to bed. Still, that. I wish I could do that, but. I get done with the con, go crash in the hotel room, get up, and start driving to the next con. Oh, like, dude, trust me. Man. I went from Orlando, Florida, to Las Vegas, Nevada for a sh- for a shows back to back. No, what? so uh, no, I wish I was kidding. I went to Sin City Anime in Las Vegas, and mm-hmm. then that ended on Sunday night. I got up, took care of some things around the local town on Monday. Left mm-hmm. Monday afternoon, leaving for Orlando to get there by Thursday. <laughs> Dude, I no, drove actually, from Corpus Christi, Texas, to Fargo, North Dakota, for a show. No. Oh yeah. You, I mean, I I hate to say it. I mean, I know it's probably cheaper than a plane ticket, but I'm like, no. You're a better man than me. Now it's starting to get cheaper than a plane ticket. You know, this time last year, not so much. It probably would have been cheaper to fly, but I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good. I'll drive. I okay. like driving. I've My dad was an over-the-road truck driver when I was a kid, so I've been to every continental United States. I have not been to Alaska or Hawaii, but I've been to Canada. I've been to Mexico. I've been to everywhere but Alaska yeah. and Hawaii. Let me ask you this. So when I went to Alaska, we went in the summertime. Do you like it? Uh, you like it? I'm trying to think. You're from Texas. Is, it, is Texas where you're from? Is the part of Texas you're from, is it really humid? 110% humidity at 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Alaska's going to feel so great to you. Because even in Georgia, where we're at, y'all's humidity is a little bit harder than ours, but not by that much. Dude, you'd love Alaska. On the cruise at like 5 in the morning when it was quote-unquote cold, I was literally in shorts and a, you know, like a long T-shirt. Yeah. The crew, the crew members looked at me like I was crazy. I was like, dude, I'm from the south, man. It's, this is nothing. I, I'm not hot. I like this. <laughs> oh man, you don't know the half of it. I will say this, uh, because everything has to get exported out of there. It's a, uh, it's a little hot, but if you're going to visit, you wouldn't notice. But living there, no. Yeah, well, I have beautiful. a friend of mine that lives. Actually, I have a, two friends of mine that live, one in Fairbanks and one in Anchorage, and they're like, "No, nah, no, nah, fam, we're cool." But they also pay you to live there. Do you get like all those like uh, subsidy checks from the oil rigs and stuff? So you do make a, quite a good living just living there. <laughs> no, okay, you're not the only person that's told me that. Okay. Yeah, the oil, the oil refineries and all that stuff that is up there because it's still, I guess, considered native land or something like that. They mm-hmm. give uh, subsidy checks to the city, and then the city disperses it to the communities. Huh. I just okay. heard about that about two years ago. I didn't know that was real until a friend of mine I, who lives up there let me know. I didn't know that neither. I was like, dude, nobody's paying you to live somewhere. Okay. They are paying you up there. People like if I want to do a truck, like, 
planning for that con, I was like, all right, I need this amount of money, I need this amount of money. And I'm thinking, all right, hey, I got enough to go buy some T-shirts. No, a convention to me, my buddy Jay told me this. He's, we both agreed that a convention, because we're big gamblers. Like, we'll go out to casinos. He's like, conventions, anime convention to us are like the nerds version of a casino. Like, they're just burning money to burn money. Yeah. And there's a lot of there's a lot of states where people show up to a con to spend and go broke. Like uh, North Dakota is that way. If you ever get to go to a show up in North Dakota, people show up to those shows to spend money. I just I don't get it. Have you ever been? Let me ask you this: Have you ever been to Dragon Con? No, I that is on my con bucket list so bad. That's like my February first my... vendor applications open up for Dragon Con, and I have friends this year that work on the communities, on the staff. So I might be like, "Can you help me out, please? I want to go." The, really? Oh, it starts that early. February first. Most cons, like especially Savannah Amazing Con, uh, I applied and paid for that booth two or three weeks before the show. Okay. Because I had reached out to them via Facebook and like, hey, I just applied for the wait list. Is any cancellations going on? He goes, well, unfortunately, not for your artist booth, but the 10 by 10s just opened up. Do you want one of those instead? I'm like, yes, please. But okay. cons open up vendor applications months in advance. Okay. Because literally, yeah, I, I applied to be at a uh, Savannah Comic Con last year in June. Mm -hmm. I applied for that the September of the year before. No way. Yeah. Cons open up applications quickly. That way they can start making that money. Okay. Like, I'm, running a, uh, I'm running a show in Wyoming this year in September. And come next month, my vendor applications will be open. God, you're going to go all the way out there? I lived in Cheyenne for the last 17 years. I just moved out of Cheyenne. Okay. So you're familiar with the area. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. What's Wyoming like? That's like, that's kind of on my bucket list, but it's like... The mm. cows outnumber the people three to one. That's what I've heard. Right now, I do believe as of 2022 from the census report, the population for the state of Wyoming was like 516 something thousand. The cow population is 1.4 million. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I could see why there's cows everywhere. Cows outnumber people by almost three to one. Huh. I just learned something new. I know, I'm trying to... Have you done any cons internationally, like Mexico or Canada? No, I have not. Uh, I have a lot of friends of mine that try to get me to come up to do shows in Canada. I just haven't had the huh. chance to yet. Those shows are so huge, they sell out quickly. And it takes six months to get your v your uh, passport. And by mm -hmm. the time you get your passport, the show's already sold out. Yeah. Uh, I'll say this. Uh, you're gonna, we had to get, I had to get my passport because going to Alaska, you were on international waters. So they said, so I had to get mine. My wife's already had hers. And I literally, as soon as we said for our honeymoon, we wanted to go to Alaska. She's like, you need to go get your passport now. Because she said it'll take about six. They were reporting six months. But I got lucky. And it literally came at the six-week mark. That's nice. Lucky. Oh. I know friends of mine that took eight months to get their passports. Oh, yeah. That's like uh, my second aunt is from the Philippines. And she to get her a U.S. passport, she just got hers, and she put in the application like six months ago, like you said. It's it's just crazy. You think not a lot of people are asking for passports? Oh no! Oh, 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 oh boy! I have a friend of mine that works for the post office in Fort Collins, Colorado, and she works in the passport section. She goes, uh, "There is so many applications that come through a day that she there's no way she can't keep up." Ah, so it's a. So it's like the cows in Wyoming, huh? Yes, sir. God, I didn't think it was that bad. I got lucky. I did mine down here in Tipton. That's probably why it took about six weeks. I mean, Tipton, if you catch them on a slow day, it's just like, meh. And you know what's crazy? The lady literally looked at me like I gave her all my paperwork. She goes, do you swear to me you are Devin? 
And I'm like, S, I swear to you, I am Devin. So I, the questions that they ask. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm just like, okay, she, she didn't even do a back check. You know, I mean, I think they did the background check. I can't remember. She just looked at me. She's like, put your hand on this Bible. And she's like, swear to me, you're Devin. I said, I swear I'm Devin. She said, all right, have a good day, Devin. And she just walked away. I said, okay. I just I just walked away. I said, okay. I called my um, wife. I said, hey. People do there. Oh, dude, you don't know the half of it in this town. I called my wife. I said, good news. I got asked if I sworn that if I was Devin. She's like, well, I hope you're Devin. I've dated you for three years. I'm about to marry you. I said, I hope I'm Devin, too. I've been Devin for 26 years. I was 26 oh. at the time. I said, yeah, I've been Devin for 26 years. I hope I'm Devin. Be pulling the old Spider-Man clone saga on me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. When they, Wait, let me ask you this. Are you a big Marvel and DC fan? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's like... Uh, man, I'm such a big Spider-Man collector. That's another thing. I was going to show you my stuff in my office, but of course, Skype's being Skype, so I'm doing this through a cell phone, which I did not... Sorry, everybody. Sorry. But yeah, man, I'm a... That's like, I'm over here telling my wife, because she knows Spider-Man a little bit, and she's like, I hope you're not a Spider-Man clone. I said, I hope so neither. So I just literally laid in bed at night. I was like, hmm, somewhere in this town, there's a Devin with even blonder hair who thinks he's the real Devin. I hope he goes to work tomorrow, and I don't have to. Dude, that's just fucking funny. That's just funny. I, dude, it's true. I, dude, I'm not being funny. This ain't a bit. This is, this is the truth. This is the God honest truth. A U.S. government worker literally looked at me. She pulled out a little black Bible and she's like, "Swear to me, you're Devin." I, I am was Devin. on. I was just leaving a show, a, a convention. I was leaving EPCON, which is El Paso Comic Con in El Paso, Texas. I got okay. about 200 miles north of town, you know, up towards you know, like New Mexico and stuff. Matter of fact, I think I was actually in New Mexico, and I, there's a border patrol. The border border. Uh, uh, an immigration checkpoint right there. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, this was time during COVID, so they couldn't come up to the car. And this yeah. poor little kid walked up and says, Are you a Mexican citizen? Are you a United States citizen? And I was like, Yes. Just, <laughs> I almost got detained. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you put on an accent that you said, Yes. And I was like, Yes, I am an American citizen. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Get out of here. I'm like, Okay, man. <laughs> Get out of here, bro. I'm here to play games. I, I didn't uh, even oh, yeah, do it on purpose. I was like, I was like, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> oh, so actually, yes. Yeah, so this day six of our cruise, we went to Victoria, Canada, and their immigration looked at us and they're like, You're American? And I said, Nah, man, you hear the thrall in my voice? I'm from the South. My wife's like, Stop doing your accent. I was like, Bro, what you talking about, man? This is how I talk, man. I'm from the streets of New York. And that worker looked at me. She's like, are you an American or not? I said, yes, ma'am, I am. I swear, I'm sorry. I was just trying to be funny. I almost got detained in Canada. I was about 10 years old the first time I went to Canada with my dad. And uh, we were stopped at the at, at the checkpoint there in uh, North Dakota, uh, just outside Grand Forks, North Dakota, to be exact. Mm-hmm. And my, they're like uh, the 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 immigration officer asked if we brought. I can't remember what the exact question was, but it was something. My my mom turned it into a dirty statement. No officer, we didn't even bring protection. And <laughs> that officer just looked like he gave no shits about jokes that day. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, man, probably the stuff they go through. Oh, man, I'm trying to think what other stories I got. I, I have some more stories. Heck, I even got some coaching stories, too, but we'll be here all night if I tell them those. Oh, yeah. But it, it is great. I mean, me and my wife, we love Canada. I Actually, one of my goals, and I actually uh, – we've talked about it. There's actually uh, American football in Japan and Europe. Yep. And hopefully uh, – we kind of – our long-term goal is to go to Japan just to check it out. But, dude, if I could get a – American football job in Japan? Oh, I'm gone. I am gone nice. like the wind. And then I want to go to European. some of the conventions in in Japan, dude. I hear those are off the wall. Think so? Just nuts. I have a friend of mine that was uh, stationed in uh, in uh, Korea, 
Uh, he was working Border Patrol for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And uh, during leave, he got to go to one of the big shows in Germany. He sent me photos and videos of that. And I was like, <laughs> I want to go so bad. Why you got to tell me you got to do this to me? Show me things I can't touch. I'm telling you, brother. That's like, we want to go to Europe, too, at some point. At some point. That would be Germany's, nice. Germany's beautiful and things like that. Uh, let's see. But yeah, let me ask you this. Since you've been on the con scene, what's been your worst con and best con so far? Ooh, okay. This is going to be fun. Because I have two cons that are tied for the worst. Like, okay. 100% I'll be bottom of the barrel. We'll never go okay. here again. We'll do everything I can to bash these two shows on on the internet. Just, just no. Uh, if, I, if, I, if I could have a, a, two wishes from a genie, It'd be make sure that these two shows never come back into existence. <laughs> See, and my thing one... is to be sorry. Go ahead. To be honest with you, my fault. I didn't mean to cut you. To be honest with you, brother, because of that construction, I'll probably never go back to the Savannah Con ever again. I just I went to uh, Arlington Comic Fest in Arlington, Texas, just outside Dallas, around the beginning of September last year. Actually, the September first and second, th- if I remember correctly. Um. Let's let's go through the let's go through this list. It was a hundred dollars, one hundred fifty dollars for the booth, okay. Another hundred and fifty dollars right. for the hotel. Another hundred dollars between gas, food, and supplies. So I'm about like what three hundred plus in, four hundred yeah. plus. About one fifty, one fifty. About we're about right at four hundred. Let's go ahead and yeah. cap it out at four. That's just to get there, okay. No. I made on a three day show $150. You only in three days you only made one fifty? I completely lost money at that show because they held it in Dallas during a oh. Dallas Cowboys home game. No, you can't do that. No. Uh the guests the celebrity guests that they had were were phenomenal. So oh. the guests couldn't they no. When you hold it during a home game of the Dallas Cowboys, you just might as well just hang up your hat and call it a day. Uh, so I lost over $300 going to that show. The other worst show that, again, if I could have a wish for my genius to make sure the show never comes back, is in Casper, Wyoming. It's called the Wyoming Pop Culture Convention. For the booth, it was 150 bucks. For the hotel, it was about 200 for gas, food, and supplies, I'm about two fifty, so I'm about six hundred dollars in just to get there. Yep. I made two hundred and fifty dollars. <sighs> that show was so poorly organized, not even didn't even have a, a properly properly working Facebook page. The website was garbage. It looked like people just threw a show together and hope it stuck. <laughs> Let me ask you this: Did you? Uh... I'll be honest with you. We were kind of t- like I said, this was our first convention as a group, and uh, like I said, a local vendor of ours, a local friend of ours that runs a card shop. I'll be promoting them near the end of the show here. Uh, they told us about it, and so when I hopped on the Savannah Anime, I can't even say it right, but uh, you know, anim- what I'm uh, an amazing anime and gaming expo. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I pre- again, trust me, brother. If you listen to our stuff, Kyle corrects me all the time. He's like, he's like, Def, bro, I got you. I was like, whew embarrass myself here but uh dude i looked at their website i said oh tickets are 35 dollars i said oh no wonder they're 35 dollars i said all right here we go to me that website i was like mm, but i was like mm, our target audience is there and it's only three hour drive i said mm, could always be worse see uh like i said i've been going to that one venue for the better part of four years give or take uh, that is that is my best show I've ever done in Savannah. Uh, okay. Profit wise, connection wise, inventory sold, everything about that show was phenomenal, especially from a vendor standpoint. My okay. best show on record to this day. I will not miss going to this show unless I'm in a coffin somewhere. Uh, it's called I Magic Con up in Minot, North Dakota. 
That is yeah. my favorite show of all time. The majority of my friends live in that town. I am so well known in North Dakota that every time they see a show pop up, they mm-hmm. like if uh, if a new show pops up, there there's people are sending me links to make sure I can go to that show. Okay. Uh, because everyone in North Dakota, for some reason, just loves me, and I don't understand why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But let me ask you this. Do you collect those uh, weapons? Do you ever do any anime weapons? Uh, like no, account? I do not collect the prop weapons, the fake ones. I have about $4,000 with a real still behind me. Okay. So. I honestly, at that convention, I was looking at... The stuff felt real. How do you know when it's if it's like the metal? Does it feel actual heavy when it's yes. the real stuff? Yes. Oh, okay. So I did find some real stuff. I was there was a there was a few pieces of real steel that were there. Like that one big booth in the middle had a lot of uh, foam and a lot of real steel. Yep. I actually was about to pick up a. Uh, I could, my buddy Jay. He's a big Ninja Star guy. They were the one. They, they were the booth of the actual Ninja Stars, and he's a big Ninja Star guy. And I saw the Katanas from Naruto, and I was like, I said, man, that looks pretty real to be made of foam. So I, you know, I slightly picked it up, you know, the best I can because, you know, they had a zip tie because, I mean, obviously, someone's mm-hmm. going to steal a bunch of Naruto stuff. So I kind of felt it in my hand. I said, huh, this is actual steel. I said, Jay, come feel this. And he's like, huh, this ain't foam. But I didn't buy it because, dude. Honestly, I was tempted. I wanted to look at the price because, like I said, I bought stuff for my wife. I was thinking about buying something for me. Dude, the both weapon guys that were there, they could give not two cares in the world. When I walk yep. up there, they're just on their phone like this. They're just like, meh, you want a sword? Nah, bro, I'm trying to talk to you. I actually, like I said, I was going around, we were going around the venue, wanted to interview people like we are now. And they're sitting on their phone. Yeah, bro, what sword do you want? Like, nah, bro, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm really trying to help your business out. Help my business, help your business. But if you don't want to pay me no mind, I'm going to just keep walking. I did that for both bit weapon booths. I, just yeah, I knew the guy that ran the big one. I've known him forever. And he he's a good guy, but he's a little scatterbrained. Is he? You think I just caught him at the wrong time? Probably. Okay. That's why he just looked like his mind was somewhere else. And I'm over here like, bro, if you're trying to get customers, especially somebody that's like me that's not used to it, and I see yeah, something that you like. That's a big I'm, thing I've seen at conventions. Like, people won't get up from behind their phones and talk. That's what he was doing. Like he, that's what he was doing. This. And uh, that's the reason why I don't hire someone to work my, my booth anymore, because I got tired oh. of seeing them behind their phone, not wanting to do a damn thing. And I'm like, I'm paying you to interact with customers. You're getting paid per interaction. Interact. <laughs> oh, so you've hired somebody in the past. Oh, I've hired several people. Really? Just didn't work out, huh? There's uh, one of them that's worked out, and I use her from time to time, especially like if I got to be, uh, like last year I ended up double booking myself for a weekend. Uh, oh. So I had to hire her to go work one booth, and I, well, I went to another state and did another one. Uh, okay. She's good. Uh, the few other people I've hired, not so much. Really? Yeah, bro. This, uh, to me, being the person that I am, just especially in coaching, it's like you want to build networking with people. But if you're sitting on your phone, you're like, right. hey, bro, get a Keyblade sword from, or get a Naruto blade and get out. Like, I'm, I ain't buying nothing from you. Yeah, that, that kind of stuff just makes no sense to me. I'm trying whatsoever. to think. There was, we didn't hit every booth at the convention, which we were trying to, but, dude, it just got – oh, here's my fa- – I I literally was telling our comic – we have two comic book shops in this town, and I'm a regular for one of them. Uh, did you see the guy in the styrofoam mask? He looked like a Nacho Libre guy. Yes. Do you know that guy? No, I do not know of him, but uh, I've I've seen him before at, at other shows in Savannah. Dude, oh my, William, brother, let me. I'm gonna do a bad Macho Man impression because this is what he did, okay? So, like I said, you know, we were out giving business cards, and this is right when we're ready to go. We kind of, my finger was cut. I done bumped into Prince Zuko. I'm surprised he didn't chop me in the throat. I'm just like, I got a couple more business cards. I'm like, all right, let's go hand these out. And we thought he was. 
uh, cosplaying as Macho Libre. And we're, I'm a big manga. Uh, Kyle, who's the host of the show, uh, he's a big manga guy. I'll read him some, but I'm more comic book. But we saw he had his book, and I was like, yeah, let's let's go check out his manga. Because if it's interesting, if it's a reasonable price, I'll go pick it up. If it's reasonable. So I'm like, yeah, I'll interview. I said, yeah, let's see if he'll take our card. He literally comes up to us. He goes, yeah, I'm going to make sure I don't yell in my ear. He goes, welcome, brother, to the revolution. I said, I said, okay, bro, what's your book about? He said, he's literally like, my book's about this revolution of gun, basically Gundams that won World War II. And I'm like, great, man, we're indie podcasters. And my brother, like I was literally giving him my whole spiel that I gave you at the convention. I'm like, hey, great, man, we're indie podcasters we have a my brother and he cut me off he's like my brother do you want to join the revolution i'm like no bro yeah. I'm in a podcast group i want to know we like mangas we want to interview your book to help you out and help me out well brother that's great and he did this where he's like brother that's great i'll give you an email or a call and i had nothing to do with it my buddy kyle that runs the show and my buddy jay are just laughing I had nothing to do with him. I'm like, I'm like, Jesus Christ, I just want to have – I'm all about a gimmick, but, Lord, I was trying to have a serious conversation. They are just laughing. And Kyle's like, I hope he emails us. I want to interview him. I said, good. You can interview him all you want. I, I just want to have a serious conversation. That one's all on you. That one's got oh, you it is. all over it. Oh, it did. When I was telling our good friends that uh, run the comic book shop, same store, he's like, dude – Bring him to the shop if you can. I said, I'm sure he's from Savannah. I'm sure he's from Savannah, Georgia. I'm sure he'll drive down here if you let if you sell some of his books. But you can deal with all the weird Saren rap. Or yeah, he was. You saw him. Not that it was bad. I was just like, I'm not a person where it's like, all right, there's a. I was like, all right, I like the bit. But can we have a? No, brother, you got a mobile suit guns. We got to beat up Nazis. Hey, hey, that's cool. Can I have a serious conversation? Because I was ready to go. I was like, I'm just trying to hit these last row boosts right here and go home. And he was just all excited. And I'm just like, no, nah, I'm going to go home. Just, just no. No, buddy. No. You know that mood you get? I'm sure you've done it a few times at shows where you're like, all right, I want to go home. I hate to be rude to people, but I want to go home. Yep, I'm like that. At least the end of each, for each, uh, the end of every first day of every show. Like, I want to go home. Yeah. I'm done. I'm tired. Yeah. Let me ask you this. How was the convention on that Sunday? We were thinking it'd be kind of dead. Was it dead? It was de- It was a little bit less than what it was on Saturday, but we were still kind of busy. Okay. Like, Saturday was a little bit busier, but not by much. It was kind of almost equal both days. Really? Let me ask you this, just because you're doing this on the road. Did you think that convention, we thought the convention was kind of middle but the venue needed to be bigger it's like you said because of that construction did you think it turned out to be a big con or do you think it was a bust oh no it turned out to be huge like again okay. uh, this, like i said a while ago this has been my best show i've ever done in savannah okay my uh, i know we've been talking for a minute no, you're, you're good uh honestly i think it could have been better like the staff was a little off see you thought that too I honestly didn't think nobody wanted to be there that was wearing their brand shirt. I was like... It's not that the fact they didn't want to be there. It's just like... Uh, it's just I don't know what was wrong. Like They were giving vendors that were there for this year $50 off their booth to be at the Savannah Comic Con. But mm-hmm. you had to be at the ticket booth to do that at 5 o'clock. But what are we doing at 5 o'clock? We're breaking down our booth so we can go home because we have to be out of there. No one can be there past nine o'clock, according to the vendor, to the to the to the application, and to the contract, and to the to the site to the staff of the site. The whole building had to be emptied out by nine o'clock. So they gave like hardly any vendors time to go up there and get their booth to be at the other convention at the cheaper rate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also Sunday, we had to have our booths inspected before we could leave inspect it yeah they had to come by make sure our booth was broken down give us a ticket so we can bump up to the dock so we can load up our car and leave that but you're what you bring your own booth that's your personal booth yeah 
but they have to make sure that it's broken down that way i guess to help keep the flow of traffic going in and out of the loading ah. dock but okay. that's the first time i've ever had to have my booth actually inspected okay okay yeah we just so, we just felt it overwhelmed. was a great show it was just a little weird how so all right before we start digging into your product i got one more question for you since you've yeah. been doing this cons for a fat minute what is the weirdest thing you've seen? Ooh, honestly, it depends on your definition of the word weird. All right, your definition of weird, not my definition. I just, I'm just curious. Because a tinfoil guy to me was unique. Honestly, I haven't seen anything really, like really weird. You know, I've seen strange. But I haven't strange. seen straight up weird. I think the coolest thing, though, I have ever seen was, again, at that show in North Dakota I was telling you about, a friend of mine, she was poison ivy, and she actually brought in a boa constrictor snake wrapped around her neck for part no of her way. house. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's a baby thing. He's only about, like, maybe two foot long. You know, not really big enough to hurt nobody. But okay. it was still cool watching it crawl around the end of the stick and, like, looking at people. It was great. It was they, great. they allowed it? Yeah, well, they didn't allow it for too long until someone complained, and then they finally got you got to get the snake out of here. Oh, yeah. See, I'm not going to lie to you. I started to bring our dogs down here because I didn't know anything about it. And I was like, I actually emailed the convention hall people. I was like, hey, can I bring my dogs? They're little. They're like, no, they're going to. Dude, I was actually going to go pet the uh, the wild animals Speaking out in that back dogs, wall. That show I did in El Paso, Texas, where I ran into that Border Patrol agent, someone's service well, dog took a dump in front of my booth. No way. Yep. Oh, did they clean it up? Yeah, they had to, and then the the janitors came up and mopped up the rest. But that those are probably the only two strange things I've seen at the at the show. Okay, I know, dude. I was actually I was excited. I wanted to go to the, uh, you know, in that con- you know in the con- Savannah convention they had those exotic animals. Yep. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go pet a sloth. <laughs> For a hundred dollars, I'm good. I didn't know it was like, that much. Want... Oh, it was high. They're like, you want to pet a snake? Twenty five dollars to pet a snake, brother. I'd go in my backyard and just scoop one up. Right? Shit. Yeah, that was just that was that's a no go for me. No go. But all right, William. Uh, you can go ahead. Go ahead and show the people, uh, show people some of the products that you sell and things like that, so we can just wrap it up. Oh yeah. So yeah, again, like he said a while ago, he bought one of my lovely signs, and I have everything from fairy tale to full metal. You name it, I probably can either make it or get it real quick. I also, again, make customized dice trays for us D and D nerds and our D and D nerds. Ones that say like Dungeon Master or my favorite one I do says. Like- uh, don't worry, I have a plan. It's someone rolling a nat one. That's funny. Uh, flags, like actual 16 inches by 26 inches. Wall tapestries of anything from your favorite anime or from your favorite movie or from your favorite manga or whatever you like. Flasks, like the actual alcoholic flasks, like the water canteens. With everything on there from, you know, again, Full Metal Alchemist to Gorn Lagan to overlord to one piece to you know you name it i can probably make it t-shirts uh my t-shirts were actually the cheapest ones at the convention by the way uh, oh yeah i didn't see them yeah well, they were how can you not they were hanging up right there when you walked in the booth on the other side of where you got the flag from oh i'm not gonna lie to you like you said i was like oh honestly i was going down that whole stretch i was like all right mm. thanks, brother and i was going down mm. that whole stretch off, so, yeah. off, I'll have to check out flags, your site. flasks, dice bags, dice trays, storage boxes, wooden signs, you name it, good chance I've got it. All right. Uh, did you want to show the people the new products you're making, or have you not got them live yet? I do not have them Another live show. just yet. Um, I'm uh, actually in the process of trying to get my website updated. That's where the majority of my time is going right now because I literally just got it up and running two weeks ago. Uh, and you can go on there and place an order for a sign, a flask, a dice tray, a tote bag. and Oh, and Call of Duty zombie prop bottles. 
So if okay, you want yeah, Juggernog or Speed Cola or Stem Up, I've got you covered. So you can go to DragonWickCreations.com, and Wick is spelled with a Y, not an I. So that's W-Y-C-K, uh, Creations.com. And on there, you can place an order for anything I carry in my shop. And I will ship it out within the next 24 hours. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps it up here. I'm just going to I'm gonna close this out, William. So, hey, guys, like I said, check out William here at his shop. Dude, I promise you, the signs, oh, man, I love his sign. And again, his stuff's extremely affordable, which uh, I don't know if we talked about it on here or not. I'll just give you guys an example. There was literally a same lady at that convention where I met William at, and uh, she was charging $50 for a T-shirt, $70 for a long sleeve, and $120 for a jean jacket. His prices are very affordable. If you like what you see in the video, hit up his shop. I'll have the links in the description below for you guys by the time this video posts. So go support William just like you guys support us. And uh, But, yeah, subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, hey, don't forget to check out the More Sports Podcast where it's a sport podcast for everybody. And, hey, and, of course, you're listening to this on the Random Hour with Kyle Crump. We're going to be random. And don't forget, every Sunday we watch a movie every week over here at Popcorn Bucket. So check us out. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Twitter at Rando Corporate Number One and Bucket Boys 2023. If you really want to be cringy, follow me on my personal TikTok at DEVIOM25. Don't do it as a trap. <laughs> it is a thirst. I have created thirst traps on there. Yes, I have. Because Kyle and Jay will text me. They'll be like, dude, why are you making thirst traps with the podcast logos? I'm bored. I'm I'm really, really bored. Oh, and now, because of as of yesterday, last night, after dealing with the uh, all three podcasts now are available. To, with uh, all three podcasts are now available on Amazon Music. So, go check them out. Go subscribe. And uh, William, do you have anything last things you'd like to say before we end it? Uh, no. Just uh, uh, again, when he when you post up there, I make sure all the links are available because, again, I do comic cons. I do not have a brick and mortar shop. I am a strictly a comic con vendor. So I do have a list online of where I'm going to be at next. So if you wish to come find me and. Check me out and see if I'm coming to a show near you. Just hit up one of my links in my Instagram or my TikTok page, and we'll see if you can get me there. All right. Until then, guys, have a wonderful night. Toodle.